Saliu, welcome to the cave and thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Like I said earlier, man, you could have had anybody on here, but you have me. So That's great. Right. It's <laughs> exciting time. But yeah, but you also were on a pretty cool movie that I watched the other night, man. It was crazy, the Man of Joe. Man of Drone, so right? You're, so so your life has been probably been going pretty pretty happy for this role, too. Uh my life, are you saying that my life is, you know, yeah, I mean, it's um it's definitely changing. There's definitely more eyeballs on me. Um, you know, I've been at this for nine years. Honestly, last September, or excuse me, November the 17th, which was last week, it was my uh, nine year anniversary. So, you know, it's not like I just started yesterday. And then before that, I was doing theater in, in college, you know. So um, it's something I've always wanted to do. It's something I've really worked hard at. And a lot of my friends who see this movie, who've seen the movie in theaters, they always say to me, they're just kind of like, man, we're not surprised. Your work ethic is crazy, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when, and when I was doing research on you, I saw that you registered nurse. Yeah, yeah. So how did that happen? Did we like, is it, was that like a backup plan while you're doing the acting? Or what? Uh... Oh, that's that's a good question. So my mother is a registered. Excuse me, my mother's an in nursing. Okay, and I remember it was must have been like a junior high school project where I went with her to work and I watched sort of how the patients reacted to her, mm. the way they responded because she was very much. She cared for them really well, like she did her own children. You know, she'd make sure the men were all shaved, oral care was done, the women had their fingernails painted. She was just an amazing, you know, uh, caretaker. So she's the one who kind of pushed me towards that because I didn't really know what I was going to do at 15 years old. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it wasn't until I actually discovered theater on my own uh, in college was when I was like, oh, no, wait a minute. Well, this is what I actually want to do. But there's a lot of back and forth, you know, because she's a single mom raising three kids. And the yeah. last thing she wanted was for me to work at being an actor and give up because I didn't have the financial resources or or whatnot, which happens to a lot of people. It's not, you know, gigs don't pay a whole lot. And obviously that's why we just, we're coming out of this huge uh, uh, actor strike. Um, so hats off to her because she did convince me to get my BSN degree in nursing. And I did, I got it from Washington State University, go Cougs, shout out to Wazoo. Um, And I did, and then I also studied theater as well. So I kind of got the best of both worlds. You know, it's, it's allowed me to live here in LA. It's not cheap to be right. here, you know? Well, I can imagine. <laughs> it's expensive. So so throughout, like, you know, growing up and everything, and also and making the decision to go into the acting world, like, what also made you, like, what, like, acting bug? Were you watching something also on TV? And you're like, man, this is like, I might want to jump into this world. Yeah, I mean, there's things I watch, you know, I kind of was always interested in film. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. I had an uncle, right? My parents used to host a lot of people from Africa. I'm from Africa originally, Sierra Leone. So my parents would host a lot of people. They'd come to the house and I had an uncle who loved film and he'd always, I'd always, he'd always allow me to watch these movies with them. There were some of them are rated R, right? I probably shouldn't have been watching them. But the thing is, um, there were fascinating stories, fascinating ideas and plots and twists and things. And that was kind of that seed was planted, you know, as far as film and TV. And when I went to the, when I went to college, I took a class where we would analyze plays and uh, discuss that. And so that's really what got me into it. Um, and then I auditioned for a play, The Laramie Project. And as a freshman, I got a lot of roles in that because they there's a lot of roles in the cast, but the cast is very small. Um, I ended up playing multiple different roles. I played a dude, a banger who's in jail, you know, who's thugging. You know, I did that, and then I played a preacher you know, a uh, homophobic preacher. Um, and then I put in another Baptist preacher, just different roles. And I was like, wow, this is what I love. And as I was performing, I just remember there's one very sentimental scene. And I tell you, Elias, people in the audience were just, you can hear them sniffling. And so that's, I think, what what did it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what really did it for me. Then afterwards, you know, there were students my age, they were just coming up like, oh, I need your autograph. You're going to make it. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this is what I should be doing with my life. Yeah. When I look back, I trained with Ivana Chubbick, by the way. Shout out to Ivana. She's the same lady who trained Halle Berry when she won an Oscar for Monsters Ball. And I just remember watching Halle Berry give her Oscar speech and say, you know, I want to thank Ivana Chubbick. And I remember being a kid and I ran to my room and I wrote her name down. I said, that's who I want to train with. Fast forward to many, many years. That's who I train with now. You know what I mean? So I'm a big proponent on, obviously, like, we'll get into that, but like books and meditation and station and psycho-cybernetics and epigenetics and quantum physics science i love science but I also you know i'm a believer i'm also you know christian wow so like, you mentioned theater then you you know and then at the, in the acting world too like what's the biggest challenge for you tv film world or 
theater? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. Another discussion I had recently. So they're all challenging, if I'm being honest with you, man. Yeah. Uh, every role I play is, is, especially a role like this one, man, it makes me super anxious and nervous, you know? Um, but any time you have to be vulnerable, it's it's a challenge. Um, you have to be like kind of naked, uh, show your true heart, show your true self. It's not an easy thing to do. And you have to do that in all genres, film, TV, and theater. Um, so I love them all. I think primarily film would be my number one choice. Actually, theater would be my number one choice because there's sort of this connection you get with the audience that you don't get. It's like immediate feedback, almost like immediate gratification. Yeah. Uh, and then I would say film because film can go globally, especially with these international film festivals. Like I'm a frequent uh, attendee at Fra uh, uh, Khan. Um, I was just at the Berlin Film Festival where this movie had its world premiere in February in Berlin, right? Uh, that was nice. I flew my mother out. Um, but I love these film festivals because I want to be an actor who's globally known, not for fame, because they say um, film does give you fame, but it's more of being able to connect with other writers, directors that are up and coming in other countries, other nations, uh, and being able to collaborate with them. Yeah. So if I had a choice, I would say theater, film, and then TV. TV pays well. A lot of people know that with the residuals and everything like that. But um, I don't do this for the money. I don't do this for fame. I do this just for the love of it, you know? And even looking back, like, I think it's, there's this 15 year old boy in me. When I was 15, my father moved back to Africa, but there's this 15 year old boy in me that just wants to be seen by his daddy, you know, that just wants to be seen by his dad. And I think that's a huge part of why I do film. And we didn't have the best relationship growing up, but it's really cool how now like he'll, he'll write a little post on Facebook when he sees, like I did a photo shoot the other day. And he's like, you look amazing. And uh, I was in a tuxedo in a, at an event, a PR event. He's like, you look so good. And getting that recognition, man, cause there's still that little boy inside of me that, that loves his dad, you know? And yeah. once I say, man, good job, good job. You know, yeah. I'm a father myself, so. Yeah. yeah, I know, I'm a father too. It's like, I was telling Rachel uh, before we got on the air, like, it's like the family thing, man. It's always, you, you wanna be there for your kids too. Yes. You know what I'm talking about, Elias. You know, I got a son and a daughter. And man, I'm telling you, like, especially with my son, each connection with each child is very different. Yeah. But with my son, knowing that I didn't have a father to instill some of these, like, traits and some of this confidence in me, which eventually I ended up developing, obviously. But I mean, initially, you know, you don't have somebody telling you, hey, man, you're great. Hey, I believe in you. Hey, you can do anything. Like the things I tell my son, Elias, when I go eye to eye with my son and I talk to him and I'm like, man, I believe in you. You can do anything. There's a lot of emotion behind that and he feels it. Yeah. He feels it, man. And that's going to fuel him for the rest of his life. You know, and that's all I can hope to do, man. Feel him. I'm the exact same way with my daughter. She's eight years old and she takes Taekwondo. And I have, always have to, every week I have to pump her up, you know, like she, that she can do it. She can do it because she's been struggling lately. Yeah. So I like, hear you. You got to keep pumping them up. And that's where we step in, man. We give them that endurance and that. But, it, but listen, shout out to my mom though, because as a single mom, Brother, she was making like minimum wage, wasting three kids on her own. That was not easy. She had to learn how to, because they ran a janitorial business, right? At first. And after my dad left, she couldn't continue managing that. The, 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 the workforce was largely comprised of men. You know what I mean? And she's a woman in her 30s, early 40s, still very attractive. My mother's gorgeous, by the way. And so, you know, she's got different elements that she's dealing with, as well as trying to run a business. So shout out to her, you know. So what's what's your ultimate goal? You think, or like, a, or a, like a certain role, or what do you want to? What do you what do you want to accomplish? Oh man, for me, I'd love to get an EGOT, Emmy, Golden Globe, Oscar, Tony Award. But right now, I'm also focused on SAG Emmys. Um, but I'm just, you know, I'm I'm working. I I believe in like a marathon sort of mentality. I'm not here to like sprint to the finish line. Yeah. You know, um, this role in Manodrome, brother, this is not a role I would typically, in fact, when I first moved to LA, it's a role that I was, that I would never take. No, I'm not doing that. Not my kind of thing. Yeah. But as you grow as an artist, you realize your job is to tell the stories of different people, mm. you know? And so if a story, if you can find something that connects you to that character or to that story, then go ahead. And it's going to be scary and it's going to be challenging, but I don't even think I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, let's jump back to let's jump into the film now. You mentioned uh, 
how sure. is this like how is this like uh approach to you did you know somebody it was just an audition how did that go yeah so this this was actually like the third audition for me that day wow. the third audition i had just been shooting these auditions and bear in mind i work full time too you know so i'm working full time i get back it's like okay let's shoot these auditions we shoot them and i just remember at the time my manager um who's an amazing manager she called me and she's like she's english so i'm gonna try to do her english accent she's like salut they're crazy about you they're wondering um are you really interested because they're very interested in you i said yeah i'm interested absolutely she's like have you read the script and i hadn't read the script i just mm. created this character who i really liked and thought was fun and sexy and edgy yeah. i also took a lot of risks in the audition and i played music which they tell you not to do don't play music don't do this but sometimes you got to know the rules and then break the rules so anyways, um, producers reached out to my manager for a callback and the callback session was with the director. Okay. So that went really well. And then finally I was booked on it. And then next thing you know, uh, I read the script, obviously like Jesse Eisenberg is attached, mm -hmm. who I'm a huge fan of since like, now you see me. I really like what he did in the Mark Zuckerberg movie. I mean, it got him an Oscar nomination. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm working with him. And then I get like compliments from him where he's just like, dude, your audition tape was fun, scary. We didn't know where it was going. It was unpredictable. That was nice. And then also to know that an Oscar winner, Adrian Brody, <laughs> is also in the film. Yeah. I mean, that's a great, I mean, and Riley Keough, shout out to her, who's an executive producer on the film. Uh, and also she pops in there in the middle. She's in the opening scene. Um, shout out to them, really. Uh knowing that all these people are attached who are actually a part of my, my target agency. Cause you talk about, I think you got a question about goals and where I'm headed and the target. I'm very specific. It's all about specificity for me. I know that I want to end up at CAA creative artist agency. I know that I, for example, read powerhouse, which is the book that talks about Michael Ovitz and the other guys and how they left William Morris and went to create CAA. A group of guys said, look, we're going to go. We're going to do this. And they did. They all had matching Jaguars. Their wives and girlfriends would man the phones. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, it's an agency that I respect. I know that that's where I'm headed. And it's also the agency, coincidentally, where everybody who was in this movie that's an A-lister came from. So for me to be able to hold my own with Jesse Eisenberg on screen, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. It's like, okay, well, Destiny's... Destiny's doing its thing. Like I'm here, I'm here to stay. It's a marathon. Look, when I first got here, Elias, you know what I did? Brother, God is so good. When I first got here, I rented a room from a woman. Shout out to Miss Julia. I won't say her last name. I don't want to violate any sort of a clause. <laughs> right, right. She was amazing in that I rented a room from her. Uh, and then, you know, after a couple of weeks, she was just kind of like, you know, very fond of me, you know? And about a month in, two months in, she was like, you know, I should, you should buy a house here in LA. And I thought, mm, not in East LA, you know, it's not a bad part of East LA, but I thought, no, I want to be on the West side. I want to be close to my acting classes. I want to be close to my auditions. And she's like, listen, it's one of the best things you can do. And I did. So that all, my, my whole case in point is like, I'm really here to stay. This is a marathon for me. So I bought my, you know, bought my home here in 2015 and I've lived here ever since here in LA. And, you know, it's a blessing because a lot of people can't say that they can afford to buy a home in L.A. It's expensive. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's just little things like that that I look at in my life that I'm grateful for, you know, mm -hmm. that I'm just glad and grateful for. So so you booked this role. Like, how do you like prepare to play a character like this? <laughs> OK, so I booked the role. Um, I start reading through the script. Yeah. So I try to get all of the given circumstances as Larry Moss calls it, right? I get all of that. I figure out uh, what's said about my character um, when he's around, when he's not around. Um, I look for what's implied by what the director wrote. And then I kind of look at the, each scene I'm in and I start to break the scene down. In this specific scene, what's my scene objective? What do I want, right? What kind of obstacles do I face in getting what I want, right? What are different elements, like beats and actions that I can use to try to either manipulate or convince or uh, compliment to get you to be on my side? So it's just layering the scene with all different choices, layering, 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 layering. Um, and then I work with my acting coach. I work with Ivana. 
um, and we go over it. I put myself on camera. You know how athletes do, man. You know when you're playing sports, you're boxing or whatever, you yeah. watch playback. I'm big on that. So I watch playback. And I'm like, ooh, that rings true. Ooh, that doesn't ring true. Then I make notes. It's like being in a laboratory with the mm. way I yeah, I'm like sitting there like a mad scientist. <laughs> like, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong by taking notes. Yes, sir. Just putting it together. I, right, you know? right. And the final step in her book, step number 12, is you just throw it away. So when I get to set, I'm like, look, it's all in me. It's all in my body. I just got to trust that it's there and get out of the way so the character can come through. Were you given a description for this character? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was it? I want to. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? I can, I can absolutely. Uh, hold on. You know, I have things like this just on hand. You know, let me see. Amit. My character's name is Amit, by the way. Yeah. Amit. Oh, where is that? Amit. Uh, almost wish I would have had this pulled up already. So basically, he's described as a, a strong, uh, confident, outgoing, magnetic personality. It says he's one of the most pivotal roles in the film. First, genera first generation immigrant, which I am. I was born in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Uh, family from Africa, boisterous, muscular, energetic, jovial, disarming, a force of nature, a magnet, right? So yeah, that's the way he's described. And, you know, I look at like things that were said in like the Hollywood Reporter or like some of these other magazines, the way they describe my character is like an Adonis. I had to yeah. look that up. I saw <laughs> I that. Up. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had to look that up. Like, man, hold on. What does this mean? You know? I don't want to so. give out spoilers or anything too, but how intense were certain scenes with you and Jesse? Uh, very intense. But then we make them um we make them work through humor, yeah. you know, through laughing. And this is somebody who's very experienced, who's been, I mean, he's been doing this for a while, you know. Yeah. Um and great actors like that typically will take you under their wing. Um, and of course we had uh, assistance with like intimacy coordinators mm. and the director and what he wanted and, you know, our input as well and what we were comfortable with. And it was, I mean, it was a lot, it was a lot, it was a lot more seamless than you would think. It's sort of like a dance once you guys figure out your steps and everything. It's like, okay, yeah. let's go, you know, and truly it's an honor to have a scene like that, to scene that really stretches you, you know, like a movie like this, a role like this for me is my ideal role, especially one to break into Hollywood with. Mm. It shows that I'm fearless, brother. It shows that I'm bold, Elias. Like this dude right here, he's here. He's here for real. Like this dude means business. I'm here for the Emmys, the Golden Globes, the SAG Awards, the Oscars. I'm here for all of it. I'm here for going deep into character dives. I mean, in preparation for this role too, I remember you asked, you, you uh, asked that question. I mean, I, I had to do like a lot of research. I had to go into communities that I'm just not familiar with, yeah. learn people, familiarize myself, friends of mine who belong to this community. I had to, you know, not had to, but I had the opportunity to invite yeah. them to home. We sat down, we ate, we talked, we had dialogue, we laughed together, cried together, bonded. And I'm like, oh, okay. I can understand some things, some elements that I can now use for my character and that I can just have in general as a person. Mm. It's interesting how every role I play, man, it adds to my, it adds to my character. It adds to me as a person, you know, like I find myself now, even like jokingly, even being more complimentary to my brothers, you know what I mean? And getting a laugh out of them, you know, leaving them sort of tickled and breaking the ice, you know what I mean? Whereas like growing up, it was always like, oh, you know, nah, you stay over there, I'll stay over here, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I've been able to, my characters have helped me break down a lot of different stuff. You know, yeah. Uh, friends and family, when they watch this, uh, what, what, what was the what did they say to you right after this movie? What were some of this? Oh man, I had a group, big group, with me at the theater when it opened up November tenth, and uh, I didn't tell anybody anything because I mm. wanted them to be kind of like I guess I wanted them to be shocked. I wanted them to I didn't want to spoil the film for them either. Yeah, they were just shocked. They're like, man, you're like for real. You're like the real deal. Is all they were saying. They're like, you're you're next level, man. You're top shelf. Because a lot of people would shy away from going far in a role and going all the way. But when you act, you know, you can't really act. You kind of really have to be in the moment. It has to be real to you, you know. So they were very much shocked by the film. I think there were a lot of twists, a lot of turns. I always tell people the film is almost like 
um, Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver, right? It's got Ang Lee's uh, Brokeback Mountain, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, yeah. the great Heath Ledger, um, and Fight Club. You know, it's just, it's so like jolting and jarring and it takes you on all, all these different places. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an interesting film to watch for just those reasons alone. And look at then the cast. And shout out to Odessa Young too. She's amazing. She's a sweetheart. Very funny, very, very personable. The whole awesome. cast, Adrian. Adrian, I got to pick his brain at dinner. Here we are in Berlin and we're at this really nice restaurant where, you know, he's just warm guy. You know, let me just ask him a bunch of questions. And a lot of the answers I got, luckily, um, there are things I'm already doing and incorporating in my life, you know, mm. like meditation. Uh, he mentioned persistence, which nine years is a long time to be in something, man. It's a right. long time, Elias. And then, of course, Jesse. He's awesome, too. So I was and I you, was in good hands. I was in good hands. And you see, you mentioned nine years. Some some people, after a few years, they give up. They you don't give away. up. You kept going. Uh, they throw it away, man. And to get even more personal, it's like I was in a relationship for a very long time. And even my partner at the time, she was just kind of like, it's been five years. Hmm. And she just like, hang it up. Nothing's happening. But I just knew in my heart of hearts, man, you just have to know, Elias. You have to have this yeah. unwavering determination where you're like, man, this is it. I'm either going to do this or die trying doing this. Right. You know, but like I, earlier, I mentioned like a lot of different things like quantum physics, right? Psycho cybernetics, meditation. There's an author I really like, um, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. He has a book called Becoming Supernatural. And uh, I learned so much from his book, you know, it's because we're raised one way, right? I was raised Christian. And my mom's always like, in my language, she said, na for left na godian, right? She's saying like, leave everything in God's hands, leave everything mm -hmm. in God's hands. Now, my belief is like, if we're made in God's image, right, then we're creators, then we should be able to create the life we want as well. We can't leave everything in anyone's hands, really. We have to have faith, of course, but we have to make sure we do the work because Faith without works is dead, right? And also without a vision that people perish. You're given the vision. If you don't want to perish, you got to go for that vision. Have right, faith, right. put that work in. You know, and that's why I go to class every Tuesday and Wednesday. I mean, I think that's every Tuesday and Wednesday. Man, it's a 55, one hour drive for me to get to class. One way. I make that drive every Tuesday, Wednesday, I go to class. Yeah, but it makes you, I bet it makes you feel good though. It makes me feel good, man. It builds confidence yeah. in you. If you know, like you're working on your craft. Because if you're not getting better, you're not, you're, you're only getting worse because <laughs> time is going and people are improving themselves. And what are you doing? You know, you have to be improving yourself. Yeah. So, uh, so what's next for you now? Any projects you're allowed to tell us about that you're coming out or you're working on? Well, I've got some really big uh, auditions um, that I've sent off. We've gotten some good feedback, my reps and I. Mm. Uh, so we're looking at some things happening uh, early January. That's awesome. Overseas. So that's yeah, exciting for me that's awesome too. Right? because earlier I mentioned that for me, it's about having a global impact, working with global artists. I love the U S I think it's a wonderful nation. I love when I get to shoot out to New York and do something or Atlanta or yeah, LA. Right. Um, but I also, I also with all the traveling I've done, man, it's just, it's beautiful to see people out there in the world and watch their traditions and customs and take part and just, you know, it's a beautiful thing, humanity in general. There's a lot that we can all teach each other. That's awesome. So you know, how can the listeners and the viewers find you on social media, keep up with you for more movie, more movie stuff, interviews and news? Right. Yeah. So I'm on uh, Instagram. I use Instagram quite a bit. I'm on Twitter as well. I use that as well. Um, Instagram, Twitter. I have a, a webpage, salusasay.com. So Twitter, Instagram, uh, all, everything, everything, Facebook, mm -hmm. um, everything, pretty much every social media platform, TikTok, uh, snap snapchat mm, yeah i'm on everything i'm on everything yeah so i want to thank you for giving me a few minutes today this was great and next project we'll have to get you back on and continue this conversation right on brother thank you so much for having okay. me i really appreciate it